my name is Martin Holt. I'm a researcher at the National Centre in HIV Social Research based at the University of New South Wales. And today I'm going to be talking to you about some key findings from the Sydney Gay Community Periodic Survey. So what is the Sydney Gay Community Periodic Survey? Well, this is a questionnaire that we conduct twice a year in February and August. Uh, local recruitment is coordinated by ACON and a team of trained recruiters who go out to venues, events and clinics which gay men use. So if you see somebody out with a clipboard and they approach you, I'd really appreciate it if you could take part. The survey focuses on sexual practices, relationships, uh, HIV and STI testing and drug use. Okay, so what do we use these data for? Well, they're used uh, to guide HIV prevention and health promotion activities in the Sydney metropolitan uh, area. Uh, you can see a picture there of the report that we put out uh, each year. Um, in the February, February 2012 round, uh, earlier this year, uh, we recruited nearly 3,000 men from 20 sites across the city. And the sample that we attract is um, typically nearly all gay identified with a smaller number of bisexual men. They're mainly Anglo-Australian, although around 60% uh, are born in Australia and about 40% from overseas. Most of them are well ed educated, they have some tertiary qualifications and most are in full-time employment. So what are the kind of indicators that we look at in the survey? Uh, well, one of the things I mentioned is HIV and STI testing. This slide shows you um, HIV testing indicators over the last six years. Uh, the top line, the orange line, is the proportion of men who say they've ever had an HIV test. And you can see that over um, 9 out of 10 men in Sydney say they've had at least one HIV test in their, in their lives. Um, the figure has dropped slightly in the last year to about 88%. The blue line, uh, the lower line, is the proportion of negative men, uh, primarily, who say they've had a test in the last 12 months. And you can see this, this is relatively stable at around 70% uh, of men. Um, it fell slightly between 2011 and 2012, so that's something that we pay attention to. This slide shows you HIV status. Um, so this uh, shows the results of testing, and, but it also includes the men who've never had a test. So the men who've ne never had a test or they haven't had a test result, that's the 14% you can see there. Uh, three quarters of the men say they're HIV negative as a result of their last HIV test. And just over one in 10 men, the 11% you see there say they're HIV positive. Uh, so this is a, a broad representation of HIV status in Sydney. Okay, so this slide just uh, focuses on HIV positive men in the survey. There's about 280 of them who take part each time we do the survey. Uh, and we ask men whether they are uh, on HIV treatment or not, antiretrovirals. You'll see here the solid orange line shows the proportion of men who are on treatment and that that has gone up during the reporting period from about two thirds of positive men to over, just over 80% the last time we ran the survey. Uh, the purple line that's declining is just the mirror image of that. That's just the proportion of men who say they're not on treatment and you can see that's falling. Um, the dotted orange line, this is uh, a marker of treatment success and well-being among positive men. This is the uh, viral load indicator. Um, and the dotted line there is the proportion of positive men who's on treatment who say they've got an undetectable viral load. And that's a marker of treatment success. And you can see that that's gone up over time. And now um, over 9 out of 10 positive men on treatment say they have an undetectable viral load. Okay, so this slide shows you relationships with men. We ask a series of questions about men's sexual activity and their practices with casual and regular partners. And uh, I've given you a summary here from the 2012 data. Um, you'll see here the, the red slice, that's the proportion of men who say they only have casual sex. Uh, so that's 25%, one in four men say they only have casual partners. 30% uh, um, of men uh, say they have a regular partner but they also have casual sex. Uh, just over a quarter, 28%, say uh, they only have a regular partner, so we class them as monogamous. And uh, that 16%, the blue slice, uh, these are men who say they're not currently sexually active with other men at the time of the survey. 
So the thing to take home from here is if you add the red and green slices together, over half of men in Sydney have casual sex. And if you add the green and the purple slices together, over half of men in Sydney have a regular male partner, a boyfriend or uh, a long-term partner. Okay, so this slide is just looking at men with regular partners, with a boyfriend or long-term partner. Uh, and one of the things we ask about is whether men have an agreement with their regular partner about casual sex, about sex outside the relationship. Um, now what you see here is uh, the orange line, the top line, is uh, men who say they have no agreement with their partner, so they've never spoken uh, explicitly with each other about what's acceptable outside the relationship. And you can see that uh, back at the uh, beginning of this reporting period, at 2007, over half of men said they had no agreement with their partner about casual sex. That's actually fallen over time, so now there's more men with an agreement, uh, which is good, although there's always room for improvement with these indicators. The bottom two lines, which overlap, they're blue and purple, show you the most co common agreements that men have with their regular partners. Uh, and unsurprisingly, these are that either no casual sex is allowed, that the agreement is for the men to be monogamous, or that if you have casual sex, if you have an open uh, relationship, that you have safe sex only with casual partners. Some of the things that we pay very close attention to uh, when we ask men about their practices with regular and with their casual partners is about uh, condom use for anal intercourse or anal sex. This slide uh, shows you um, anal intercourse and condom use um, between regular male partners, so men in relationships. We know uh, over time that men are much more likely to practice unprotected sex with their regular male partner, somebody they know well. And that's the top line you can see here, that's the orange line. Uh, so just over half of men uh, in relationships say they have unprotected sex with their primary partner. Um, the blue line, the one in the middle, uh, shows you that uh, over a quarter uh, of men with regular partners always use condoms for anal intercourse. They always have protected sex. And the bottom line, the purple one, is men who say um, they don't have anal intercourse with their uh, primary partner. And that's also about um, one, in, uh, one in four men in relationships at the moment. Most of these indicators are stable over time, although um, any unprotected and common use have fallen a little. This slide shows the same indicators for uh, men who have casual sex um, and anal intercourse and condom use with casual partners. Now the pattern is slightly different here. So you'll see that the most common practice, the blue line at the top, is always using condoms for anal sex. And nearly half of men with casual partners say they always use a condom when they have anal sex with a casual partner. The next line down is the proportion of men who say they have any unprotected sex with casual partners. Now this can be a one-off, or this can be on a few occasions, and the time period we ask about is the last six months. You can see here that over one in three men with casual partners uh, report some unprotected sex with those casual partners. And obviously this can be a risk for HIV transmission. And the bottom line is the proportion of men who avoid anal intercourse with casual partners, and you can see that's about one in five. Okay, so this is one of the last things I'm going to show you. This is a slide showing you uh, uh, where Sydney men meet their male sex partners, so where they pick up. And, and I've just given you a selection of the most popular places. Now you'll see on the left hand side, uh, this shows men who've met other men through the internet over the last three years, uh, and that's the time period for this slide. You'll see that over a third of men um, commonly use the internet to meet other partners, uh, and these are commonly sites like Gator, Manhunt, Aussie Men, and so on. The next most popular um, way that men meet other men is through mobile apps like Grinder and Scruff. We just started asking about this in the last couple of years, and you can see that already uh, nearly one in three men are using mobile apps in Sydney to meet other men. Now the other um, locations and ways to meet men are things like gay bars, saunas, beats, sex parties, uh, travelling within Australia and travelling overseas. And we've noticed an interesting pattern over the last few years that actually the use of these physical locations is declining uh, to meet other men 
and that started when the internet became popular but it's uh, continuing now that men are using mobile apps on the go to meet other people and that's something we'll continue to follow. So that's an overview of some of the key indicators from the Sydney Gay Community Periodic Survey. I'd just like to acknowledge the other people who make the uh, survey possible, particularly ACON and its recruitment staff and all the men who take part each year. As I said before, uh, if you see somebody approaching you for the periodic, periodic survey, uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to participate. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, drop me an email uh, or you can check the National Centre website or the ACON website. Thanks very much.